When the ship was taken out of commission, the hydraulic fluid was replaced with a different type of fluid. Not only did we not have enough electricity to run the electric motor, we also didn't have the proper fluids and lubricants to run it under power. The last time I was up here, we spent about six days just going through operator's manuals and technical manuals and uh, mechanically going through the turrets and trying to figure out what the possibilities were to raise a 238,000 pound gun barrel without electric power and without hydraulic power. And we went to the left gun uh, down into the gun pit, which is the space that's underneath the gun inside the gun room. That's where the BN response is located for the elevating gear. We took a three foot long wrench, put a three foot cheater bar on there. One person acted as a brake and the other person acted as a drive unit and it rotated the shaft and that gave us the elevation. Dan Powalski took the first run on it and he probably wrenched on that pipe for the better part of five to ten minutes. Uh, he passed it on to me, I hit it for about another five minutes and then I had to pass it on to somebody else. It was uh, a lot of work and by about ten o'clock in the morning we were able to get left gun turret three up in the air. Work didn't end there. We went up turret one, we moved the sheet metal off of there in what I would think would be record time. And after that, I had a couple of volunteers still waiting to do some more work and uh, we went up to turret two and started removing the sheet metal off of there. So probably tomorrow we got another five or six hours worth of work. Sheet metal will be off and probably in the next day or two, we'll be looking at six to nine guns up in the air. About two months ago, I. I saw the Iowa and I knew the whole history behind it, that it was the last one and that there might be a possibility of it being scrapped. And then when I found out that a group picked it up, that's where this all started. I saw that they had some pieces missing. I didn't know what they were called. As it turns out, they're called bloomers. And they go on the, the back part of the 16-inch guns where it goes into the casement and they didn't have them. We manufacture awnings and canopies. We're a custom fabric company. I was online and I just put a couple sentences out there that I'd be more than willing to give them a hand. And if they'd let me do it, I'd do it at no cost. Just donate it. Ed from Evanston Awnings sent us uh, the first test buckler. The originals were very, very heavy rubber, three or four ply, extremely stiff, just so they could uh, withstand the overpressure from the blast and, and the recoil of the gun. So they had to be very flexible. And what I'm sitting underneath here is actually the upper hoop, which supports the buckler and maintains its shape as the gun elevates so that they don't get caught inside and become misshapen. All the hoops were, were taken off uh, so they could install some sheet metal covering for dehumidification purposes. And then when they did that, they actually cut off all the pad eyes that, that held them. So just welding these back onto the ring here, which is where you clamp the, the butler. When they get it back, it'll have a band that goes all around here. They shove it into these openings. It'll just wrap around and there's another band that goes around that and attaches it there. And everybody seems to think that the ones that are on here, they're either on the New Jersey or the Missouri. A lot of parts were borrowed back and forth. Goodyear says that they still have the blueprints micro copied somewhere, but they don't know where. Nobody, nobody's working there that worked there when these were made. So now it's just a matter of just looking at pictures and trying to copy it as best we can.